Hey, what's up guys? Pablo Munoz here from ZeroShGuides.com and welcome to another video of this mini-series on my favorite features of ZeroShe 2021.6.2. So, in this video I'm going to show you uh, another brush. Uh, in the previous one I showed you the, the mesh balloon, so this one right here. Uh, so in this video I'm going to show you the Mesh Extrude and the Mesh Extrude Pro. So these ones are pretty handy. Also, maybe we get a chance to show a little bit of the Mesh project. Uh, these ones I've found them to be really cool and handy for um, hard surface stuff, although you can use them for anything that you want. So, like I said, these videos are just to show you practical examples of how you can use or maybe different uses of these brushes. So I'm going to click on the Mesh Extrude and it works in the same way as the previous one. You hold Control and that's where this brush lives and I can hold Control, click and drag and it will generate a mesh, but in this case it doesn't inflate it, it doesn't have a balloon effect, uh, but it's, a, it's just a, a rather flat surface which is pretty pretty cool and there are a few settings that you can control uh, a few things that you can tweak to generate a different type of mesh or a slight variation of that uh, of that mesh and you can find those in the brush palette so i'm gonna open up my left tray here take my brush palette and drop that to the left and i'm gonna clear some of these ones collapse anything that we don't need and if we go down to the bottom you have these mask mesh modifiers if i click on that you have these resolution, smoothness, and bevel. So these sliders are grayed out because right now I have the move brush selected. Uh, so I have to hold control to access my masking brush, in this case the, uh, the mesh extrude, and you'll see that those modifiers become available as long as I hold control. So as soon as I let go, they're not available because they only affect the mask meshes, not the, the move brush, okay? So they're pretty, pretty straightforward. I'm gonna do the standard one. So control, click and drag. So this is what we get. Let's turn on polyframe so you can see a bit better and change the material. Right, so we get this effect uh, with these settings and the resolution, the smoothness and the bevel, that's what we can control basically um, as a starting point or the settings to, to set as, as a default of this brush. So I'm going to hold control and I'm going to reduce the resolution quite a bit so you can see the effect. Nothing else. Hold control, click and drag and it's pretty straightforward, right? So you get something a little bit cleaner with, you know, less less polygons um, and for the most part it looks really, really good. I mean, there's some triangles but it's a, it's a pretty decent geometry, right? That is just the resolution. Let's clear that out. Uh, let's go back to what we had on 128 and the smoothness would be the next one. The smoothness is how smooth this is. For the most part, I wouldn't change this but I'm going to show you a quick um, a quick way to you know, generate something a bit more hard surface stuff. So if I reduce this to zero, there's not going to be any smoothness. Um, in fact, let's just set it to 25. And I'm going to do kind of like a square, right? With a smoothness of 25 and a re resolution of 128. Now, if I set the smoothness to zero and do the same thing, we're going to get slightly sharper corners, as you can see here. Right? That also has to do with the resolution. So the more resolution that you have, the, the more easy it would be for Sirius to describe the, the shape that you created with your mask brushes. And finally, the bevel, that has to do with this bevel in here. You see this blue, this blue line or this blue uh, poly loop? That is the bevel. So we can change how much bevel we have. So let's hold control. Uh, let's set this back to 25. For default and the bevel, let's set it to 10. It's going to be pretty intense. Hold control, click and drag, and there we go. So <laughs> a bevel of 10 gives you quite a bit of bevel, uh, which is fine. Now all of these things are easy to tweak, um, but a, like I said, I want to give you a practical example of how to use all of those things. So I like to have a little bit of bevel. So 0 0.5 is perfect. So in fact, all the default settings are pretty pretty good for whatever for whatever you want to do. I just wanted to show you where they are in case you want to change them. So let's undo all of this and I'm going to hold control and create a, a mesh like this and I'm, I'm also going to hold shift before I let go so that it's right in the center. Now we can go ahead and lock the camera, right? And if you remember from the previous video where I showed you the mesh balloon, if you don't move the camera you can add or subtract to this mesh. So I can hold control and shift Go ahead and do that, just mask this part and instead of holding shift I'm going to click on alt or I'm going to hold the alt as well 
and it's going to remove that that piece right so th that's how you can sort of clean up certain areas we can even detach it from this sphere if we want to Hold control alt and remove that and that's how you can sort of clean that now you can do that in this in the middle as well so i can hold control do something like this then alt and we create we can create a hole like that so that's how you can create very interesting sort of like hard surface panels and and that sort of thing so i'm gonna do in fact let's just don't do that I didn't like that one i want to hold control clear that out same thing here hold control and then alt and let's do the same thing here or in fact in this area i can show you a different brush right i haven't moved the camera or anything so it should be all right go to mesh extrude pro pro depth hold control and this will give you kind of like perfect circles and hold the alt key and remove that alt key and remove that right so you have this pretty decent effect and pretty decent mesh uh, with just using the mask brushes so i'm going to clear the mask holding control and click and drag remove my lock of the camera and let's go ahead and split this so we can hold control and shift to hide this one and we can go to the sub tool palette split split hidden and select this mesh and now we can work with this um you know to to fine tune it a little bit so i'm just gonna go ahead and do that um and then we can use something like the siri mesh to to get a better topology um it's not too bad so i think i can i kind of like it uh, but if you want to go you know with more straight lines and that sort of thing you might want to uh, retopologize this so i'm not going to get into that specific uh, process just because this video will become quite um quite long but just if you want to do it if you go to geometry go to the siri measure you can enable these freeze groups uh, i'm going to turn the smooth groups to zero because all the difference between the groups is pretty smooth already and you can just set a target poly count let's leave it at five which is in the thousands so five thousand so five thousand should be pretty pretty good it's kind of like half of what we currently have and siri mesh that and there we go so we have something pretty cool um obviously like i said i'm not going to get into this but there's ways that you can just fix these very quickly just wanted to show you that this is one way to do it but let's go ahead and undo that um just want to show you also that you can dynamesh this so if i dynamesh this we now have a pretty um pretty high res mesh that we can sculpt let's undo that all right oops um and what i'm going to do is center this and i'm going to rotate it 90 degrees move that to the left and then i'm going to mirror and weld that oops make sure that local symmetry is disabled uh, by the way local symmetry for you guys must be um, here on the transform palette so mirror and weld and now we have those two meshes right and then we can use um, the same extrude or mesh stroke to create kind of like some bolts or something in here now I'm going to hold control here, create something like this, let go. Um, I just created that sort of circle here, but because everything is masked, right? When you create something with the mask brushes, with the mesh mask brushes, everything else is going to be masked out. So I can go to the split section and you can say split on mask points and that will create a new mesh just for that area. Let's toggle that sphere off. And then we can just go ahead and get closer here. Let's go ahead and go back to the normal masking brushes. I'm going to mask this part here, this this side, bring in the gizmo. And let's just push that one that way. Clear the mask and reposition this. And again, this is another feature that has been in Zeros for a while, uh, which is that allows you to duplicate. Oh, hang on, I think I had a double one. This Let me... Clear that one out. There we go. All right. So back to this. Let's position this in a in a better way. All right. Let's say something like that. Uh, the feature that I was talking about is that you can hold Control and click and drag, and that will duplicate that mesh within the same subtool. So now, if I clear the mask, now this subtool has two two tubes, right? Um, I think I changed the the size, but doesn't matter just center that scale it like this 
and then we can just flatten this using the clip brushes for example so I can hold control and shift to access my selection brushes click on something like the, the clip curve or even the trim um, whichever let's use the clip brush and do this to clip it around there and the same thing here so I'm holding control and shift to access that brush there we go so now we have these I don't know what this could be uh, but in terms of hard surface like I said these tools and these brushes are super handy um, you can just use masking brushes to generate the shapes that you want uh, you can refine them and make them as polished as you want to with the Siri measure for example but as, as a quick sketch um, this works just fine so hopefully this has been helpful I'm gonna leave it here and in the next video I'm gonna show you one more of these brushes which is the mesh splat I'll see you in the next video cheers